If you have never had any spiritual encounter in your life, it is easy to just think that maybe these are just stories. But once you have a spiritual encounter, it will change you for the rest of your life because you will know that you saw something that does not belong to this world. I want to share with you a message sent to me by our dear brother. The message reads, Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story as, a, as an anonymous post? My brother, I want to confess that I have finished up like my entire generation. I was given a walking stick. If you don't have spiritual eyes, you will think that it is just a normal walking stick. Those walking sticks that they use, like the people who go to the white garment churches, that is the type of a walking stick that I have, but mine is a little bit shorter. But when you look at this walking stick, it has the shape of a snake. For it is a snake, it transforms itself, and it will become a snake when it is time for me to sacrifice. When one of my relatives is about to lose their life, when this snake is hungry, then it will transform itself. Then it will start to bother me, even bite me when it wants blood. For it will be hungry if I can't perform a ritual. Because each and every time when I have to perform this ritual, I have to drive back or fly back to Zimbabwe. So if it happens that there are some things that I still need to do, or when I'll be waiting for the days that I would have booked the flight to arrive, this snake, what it will do is that it will start to bite me. And it is not a nice thing being bitten by a snake because I'll get sick, you know, like a cobra, it has poison. But the painful part is that when it bites me, I do not die. I cannot die, but I'll just get sick. I'll have all of those symptoms that you will have when you have been bitten by a snake. So you can just imagine the pain that I go through each and every time when I'm about to perform a ritual. So I make sure that when I start to notice that my walking stick has gone missing, I will know that the time has arrived for me to rush back home so that I can do a sacrifice. Like in the past, I used to ignore the snake whenever it would tell me that it wants blood. It wanted the blood of my sister. I have to sacrifice my sister, then I'll say, I'll think about it because I'll be in pain knowing that I am sacrificing my relatives one by one. So. Who is going to enjoy this money? Because as for now, there are people that do enjoy my money a lot. Young women from South Africa that I give all this money. But it also comes at a price. But the love that they give me, it is not a pure love. For it is the love of money that attracts them to me. And they do not know that the things that give me this money, it is this walking stick that transforms itself to become a snake. So most of the time when I am not with my wife who is from Namibia, who does not know about the rituals that I do, I feel very lonely and unloved because she spends most of her times in her country, Namibia. And I find myself being alone here in South Africa with these several women that are very easy to find here in South Africa for the love of money. A lot of young women from this country are willing to do anything with you, no matter what you request them to do for you. As long as you have a deep pocket, they will just do some of the strange stuff that you can just imagine. Some of the stuff that you won't even believe that when you tell a woman that you want her to do this for you, then she will end up doing it for you like that. For example, when I get some of these slay queens, depending on the situation, I can be told by these voices that I have to make that woman to go into the L and then I will follow. Then I will follow that woman into the bathroom. Then I will poo. Then after pooing, then I'll tell her to eat my poo. I don't know why I do this, but there are voices that I hear. I hear these voices that tell me to mistreat these women that I give this money. So I think that this is the way that they pay back my snake. It does not like me to just hand out money just like that. So this is the way that they have to sacrifice also by doing all of these weird things that the voices in my head will tell me to make these young women to do. So let me go back in the past before I was this rich. When I grew up, I had a lot of bitterness because of my father who had two wives and a very big piece of land. It was like a plot. That was where we were staying, at that plot. My father had two wives, so I don't know what exactly happened. My mother passed away when I was in grade five. When my mother was buried, her relatives had totally refused to go with me so that they can take care of me. They said that my father had refused to pay some of the bride price that he was to finish off before my mother had been buried. So for that, they refused. They told my father that, you are going to make a plan and take care of this child. So I was left behind and things were really bad. Like my father's second wife, she was very bad. She was a bad person and an evil woman. What she will do is that whenever she see that it is about to rain, she will tell me to go into the fields and work. I still remember that there was this other day when I was 19, my friend said, it is time for us to find a job. This thing that we are doing here are going to get us struck by lightning. 
This is because as we were busy working in the field, it was raining very hard and my father's second wife had said that if you return back home without completing your task, know that tonight you are not going to eat anything. So we kept on working and working until one day a lightning struck a tree and I saw that tree when it was hit by the lightning, it was split into two. I and my friend ran back to my father's compound. We told my father's wife that this is what had happened to us, but she started beating me up. So on that night, I went to sleep with my friend at his house. The next morning, my friend then said, let us make a plan. Please let us make a plan so that we can just get out of here. We then made a plan after I had stolen some of my father's equipment. Then we sold some of my father's equipment, including two CS. When we had gotten the money, we went to town and tried to hustle. But I saw that while hustling, I didn't have the hustling skills. When we came to South Africa, I was someone who was still very innocent. Because I and my friends, we used to attend this Pentecostal church that is also from Zimbabwe. So while we were in that church, my friend gave his own testimony. He was also offered a job by one of the church elders. But as for me, it seemed as if everyone was just hating me. So I started to hate God and to hate everyone that goes to church. I then said, let me just try something else. So I started to speak with this other man who is from Western Africa. I spoke with that man about a lot of stuff since I was working in his restaurant. He said that these things of rituals, he didn't like them because he believed in working very hard. But the moment that he told me that he knew that there were people who were from his country who were using some of the rituals, he told me a lot of stuff. And when he told me that he knew people who were doing these rituals, I then said, please show me these people, please take me to these people. A very long time, I think for about six months, he totally refused to show me the guy whom he said that was using these rituals to transport some of his stuff. So one day, when this man came to that restaurant where I was working, he just called me and said that he is the man, but he just whispered into my ear. I then approached that him and said, sir, I know that you can help me. He said, help you with what? You know, those guys from West Africa are very loud. And when they speak with you, there is this scariness that they bring out. So this guy screamed at me and said, help you with what? I then said, I know that you can help me. I am tired of being poor. I am tired of working for this, your brother. He then said, if you are willing to do it, then I am willing to help you. This man then said that he was going to come and collect me, but he didn't promise me a lot of stuff. He said, one day I am going to come and collect you. When I had almost forgotten, this man just came. He was wearing this black garment and there was something to that black garment that he was wearing and he was holding a walking stuff as well. He then said, follow me to the car. He didn't even speak with that man that I was working for, the man from the same country he was from. Then we went to the car and when we got into the car, I saw that there were two South African women that seemed to be very sad. Then we went to a very big house my brother, these women will do anything for money. These girls, after they had gotten out of the car, while we were waiting for that guy to come, these girls had been given 13,000 rands each. And when they were given this money, I thought that maybe they are high prostitute. When this man had gone to his bedroom, he then came back holding this other god, an idol. There was something about this wooden idol, for it had a very large manhood. It was made out of wood. Then he told those girls to strip themselves naked, which they were laid on the carpet, and he started to sprinkle something on their private parts. I could not understand what type of a herbs it was, but after he had sprinkled those herbs on these girls' private parts, he then started to use this idol as if this was a sex toy. He did this for about two times, then that thing, the wooden idol, came to life. My brother, I was shocked and nearly fell off the couch where I was sitting because I was sitting on the edge of the couch. When I saw this wooden idol coming to life, I nearly fell off because I never expected to see something like that. Those girls started to make love to that wooden idol until they passed out. But the way that this wooden idol was pumping these girls and making love to these two girls, I had never seen such a thing. These girls ended up vomiting because of the way that they were being pumped into their private parts by this wooden idol. After they had woken up, they were asked to wash themselves with different herbs. After this, they were told to go with the money that they had been given. This is what these young girls do all the time. The man then told me that he was going to give me a walking stick, which will regularly come alive. And whenever this snake would have come alive, I am supposed to give it one of my relatives 
so that it can feast upon that person, it will then drink the blood of my relative. If I fail to do so, then this snake will start to bite me until it will start to suck my blood. I said this, I can do, and by the time that I started to make money with that, it was when I met the woman that I got married to, who was from Namibia. My brother, I was then told that I was supposed to turn back to Zimbabwe, which I did. When I went to Zimbabwe, I was told that I had to go to my mother's grave. On my mother's grave, there was where I was supposed to place this walking stick, so I did. I placed that walking stick on top of my mother's grave, and to my surprise, I saw my mother's remains. A skeleton was suddenly brought on top of the grave. Then I was told that I had to remove the pelvic area. You know where the woman private part is. On the pelvic area, I was told that I had to remove the bones using the hammer that had been given to me. I then started hitting my mother's skeleton right on the pelvic area. I then took the bones I was told to take. Each and every month, I have to select two days where I'll be fasting. And when I am fasting, I will take that container that'll be having the water that I have collected from the spring. I will then drink that water, which is mixed with my mother's bones. These are just some of the rituals that I did. And I know that there are people out there who will call me an evil person. But I had a very difficult upbringing. If I would tell you about my life story, it might even go on for days. A movie can be written about my life. And I ended up with a lot of bitterness towards my father and towards my father's second wife because of the things that she would regularly do to me. I hope that if you are a slay queen, if you have never met a ritualist, maybe this is a sign for you to stop chasing after these rich guys. Indeed, they will give you money, but the money comes at a price, just like what our brother said. He has to give these women the money, but they have to give him something in return. The love of money is the root of all evil. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to get notifications whenever we post our upcoming videos in the days to come. See you around. Shalom.